did Pete Buttigieg throw under the bus all Bernie Sanders supporters? As a Bernie Sanders supporter, I'm of course curious about this and I saw headlines all over the place. So he was recently talking to a group of, I think it was high schoolers and he compared people who support Bernie Sanders to people who support Donald Trump and people have been very pissed, including some friends of the show, which we're gonna read in just a second. But first, the actual quote from Pete Buttigieg. I think the sense of anger and disaffection that comes from seeing that the numbers are fine, like unemployment's low, like all that, like you said, GDP is growing. And yet a lot of neighborhoods and families are living like this recovery never even happened. They're stuck, it just kind of turns you against the system in general. And then you're more likely to want to vote to blow up the system, which could lead you to somebody like Bernie, and it could lead you to somebody like Trump. That's how we got where we are. And so there, comparing people who might vote for one of the other candidates. Friend of the show, Ro Khanna tweeted, Come on, Pete Buttigieg, it is intellectually dishonest to compare Bernie to Trump. Bernie is for giving people health care, education, child care, and more pay. He wants to blow up credentialed elitism, those who reject tuition free college for all. And Nina Turner, also a friend of the show, responded, Hello. So, is he throwing? Bernie supporters under the bus. I don't think this is about him. I think it's a bigger issue than him simply throwing Bernie Sanders supporters under the bus. Um, he is minimizing the effects on racism in America. Mm -hmm. He is minimizing that this president's platform was racism and sexism and xenophobia. And all of his like financial policies really didn't make any sense. We, we've talked so much about his tax plan mm -hmm. and how harmful that was to a lot of his supporters. We talk about his, his views on health care and how harmful that is. And we are always very clear that what brought a lot of these people together was racism. And mm -hmm. so it's so not you're about- you're saying he's inaccurately describing why people voted for Trump? Yes, okay. absolutely. And so it, it, it minimizes what the actual issue is. And a lot of people, they're afraid to say, oh, this, they're afraid to say, hey, if you vote for a racist, you're probably racist because they don't want to offend people who are totally okay with racism, totally okay with black and brown children being in cages at the border mm -hmm. because they are black and brown. Totally okay with that, but swear to God that they have a black friend that they went to fourth grade with and they cannot possibly be racist. They're yeah. afraid of those people and it afraid- It only counts if it was sixth grade or later. Exactly, right, exactly, and if there were two friends. Yeah, who and remembers he, their friends from fourth grade. Right, exactly, but um, no, yeah. I think it completely minimizes why a lot of people voted mm -hmm. for Trump or at very least why all of the people who voted for Trump were okay with some yeah. of the things that he said. Okay, and I think that you're 100% right. He is inaccurately describing why people voted for Donald Trump. I know that the, the popular wisdom is kind of what he's saying. That it was just, it was you know, poor whites who were, were like, oh man, you know, I'm not a racist, but like it's totally cool to vote for racists. It's just that my factory shut down. I tried for like the first 18 months of Trump's presidency to continually cite all of the research showing that that's not actually why they voted for them. The areas where factories had shut down actually were not more likely to vote for Trump. That on average, his voters had a higher income than Hillary Clinton supporters. I eventually gave up on that because people had locked into their heads that it had nothing to do with racism. But I think you're 100% right. That said, like not on whether he's Don't right about Trump. Don't put a butt on you were right. Don't. No, I said that's it. That's I'm different than butt. Smooth it. I'm gonna yeah. live in that. For You're hundred percent right. Let's luxuriate. <laughs> but he is comparing them, and a lot of people are mad, including Ro Khanna, who is literally on. He's a campaign co-chair for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Nina Turner has some connection to Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Tons, obviously. I I don't agree though. And look, I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter. I don't normally talk like this, but like apparently in media, especially if you're on social media, you're supposed to be arrogant as hell. So I'm just gonna say I'm a bigger Bernie Sanders supporter than most of the people who are angry about this right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think, thank you. I don't think that he's throwing, look, he might throw Bernie Sanders supporters under the bus. He might keep saying things like this or go farther. And if he does, we gotta watch out for it. But what he said there, like Bernie says stuff like that. And Bernie, Bernie says is that- not perfect. Exactly, I know, but I'm saying like that <laughs> messaging is kind of what supporters of Bernie Sanders say that his crossover appeal will be, that Bernie can get some of those people who are, who maybe are Republicans or believe that the Republicans have their best interests because Bernie actually has their best economic interest. I feel like that's kind of a version of what we've been saying about Bernie the whole time. Yeah, but you can't, he is the first, just the first sentence of Ro Khanna's um, tweet here. It is intellectually dishonest to compare Bernie Sanders to Donald Trump and the reasons why people vote or support mm -hmm. both of them. Well, I th that I, is an intellectually dishonest I, argument. I agree on why people voted for Donald Trump. I think what he's saying is if there are, I'm just taking what is in Pete Buttigieg's statement. Yeah, he's saying both 
sets of people want to dismantle the status quo. Mm -hmm. These people want, may, okay, they want to dismantle the status quo because it's racist and it's, it's, it's awful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These people don't like that they see black and brown people sort of inching towards some form of equality that still is miles and miles away, mm -hmm. and that is disgusting to do them. you think that it's the that's thing that's not the status that's not trying to dismantle the status quo yeah well and also white supremacy is not like it's mm -hmm. not you know I don't think and the, the the worry then is if he is inaccurately uh, diagnosing why these people supported Republicans if he becomes the candidate <clears throat> how is he going to campaign based on his false assumptions it's kind of like the Tyrion thing like how can I trust you you know if you've made all these mistakes if he actually thinks that we can appeal to these people that racism has nothing to do with it it is purely economic then he might tailor his message to people that might not really exist, or the, or the number at least might be way smaller than he thinks it is. Let me just say this, the person who cannot explicitly <coughs> say, hey, this group of people, they're racist and xenophobic and they believe in white supremacy. Mm -hmm. The person who cannot explicitly say that sort of kind of matches the person who is <laughs> in control of a city that has constant substantiated reports of racism mm -hmm. within the police department and does nothing about it because he simply hasn't heard the tape. Oh, so you're saying they that match. you see this as being part of sort Who of a thread. Is. Yeah. yeah. Do you think yeah, that's interesting. I mean, those and are it, just two sets of facts. So yeah. he didn't explicitly say what we seem to believe is true and then all of these people who live in that town say, "Hey, he messed up here." Yeah. There yeah, was a problem so, and he didn't fix it. Yes. And, and he hasn't really given us much of an idea of like his plans for mm -hmm. the country. So we can't look at that and say that it might lead us to believe, if, if what we know of his history as a mayor and what he's saying right now leads us to believe one thing about the way that he thinks about race in America, we can't necessarily look to his policies to second guess that. All we have is that right now. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Awkward. Okay. So but, um, perhaps he should be perhaps he should be more concerned about this, the message he's sending to a significant portion of the country than just the the Bernie thing. Right. Okay, I agree with you. Thanks. I, I also that. think that yeah. So I guess <laughs> See, we're focusing on the wrong thing. I you've, agree you've with you. You're me. right. I also, but no, I didn't we're going to get it together. I said you're right. <laughs> Maybe kidding. we're focusing on the wrong thing. Yeah. I yeah. What I I've learned from this is don't give her credit. It's not worth <laughs> no, the trouble. No, because then if it's, it's not worse than disagreeing with her. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, but yeah. You're right, and you're the worst. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.